Hey, what's up, sports to the bone family? What's up? What's up? How are you guys doing? Hope you are all enjoying the Sunday evening. All right, so there are a couple of stories that I want to zoom in on in this one. All right, two cricketing stories and one football story to close off. We see where the West Indies women they played a warm up game against Australia, and I must say things didn't really work out the way you know we would have wanted. You know, the vice captain, well, she said that even though the even though they lost. There are a lot of positives coming out of the game. So I will share with you guys and you will decide whether or not if you will see any positives there. And we see where the former West Indian spinner from Trinidad, Mr. Sonny Ramadan, he has actually passed away at the age of 92, I think. So I'm going to be giving you some information as regards to that. And then further down, we'll take a look at the Liverpool versus Chelsea game that was played um, earlier today. All right, so let us start off with the West Indies women. As we know, next Friday, they will get their World Cup campaign up and running against New Zealand, the host team. So they had the first of two warm-up games. Uh, they played the first one against Australia. And as I said, things didn't really work out at all. Australia batted first and they, played, they actually put on a competitive total. 259 for 7 is what they got off their 50 overs right um perry she got 62 from 85 to lead the way while sutherland was left not out and 54 for australia so they really really put together a good little total there now as it relates to the bowling for west indies our all-rounder captain uh, stephanie taylor she was able to lead the attack she actually got a uh, three for 51 yes my viewers and subscribers uh three for 51 Mohamed chipped in with 2 for 45, while Matthew Matthews also got 2 for 45. So those are the ladies that were really able to, to trouble the, the, the batters from Australia. Now, in terms of our reply, that is where things got from bad to worse. The bowling wasn't too bad, you know, because as I said, Australia got 259 for 7. I didn't watch the game, so I can't tell you whether we miss feel or we drop catches or anything like that. But you know, when it when it came on to a reply, it was it was really not too good. You know, um, we we actually got one hundred and sixty nine for nine. Yes, that is what we got of our fifty overs, one sixty nine for nine. So apparently, the Australians were able to keep things tight. Don't know if it was a dot ball situation again. Or what, but um, that is all we got 169 for nine. And Stephanie Taylor, she was able to get what I think she got uh, 50 from 66 balls, yeah, something like that. So a return to batting form, um, from Stephanie Taylor. Uh, no man, no, she got 66 from 128 deliveries. Yeah, 66 from 128 deliveries is what Stephanie Taylor got, not 50. So a little return to batting form for her. You know, one can say that it has definitely come at the most appropriate time. You know, we are getting down into the World Cup now. So, you know, you want you want your top players um, firing in our, and, and our cylinders. So she got that. Now, this is where the disappointment came. Nobody else was able to get over 24. Or, uh, you know, I think the next best score was around about 24 um, from Matthews. So nobody else was really able to to put together a, a, a good total so as i said 66 from matthew um from from stephanie taylor from that 128 deliveries so you can see that a whole lot of deliveries you're spending time at the crease and thing and matthew's coming in with 24. now after that performance the vice captain was interviewed mohammed and she's quoted as saying the bowlers bowled pretty well you understand they were able to keep australia in check and there are a couple of positives that can be taken from the game, even though we lost. You know, one could say that warm-up games, you know, going into a tournament, if you don't win the warm-up game, you know, then you should be able to identify certain things that you will definitely improve on. And apparently, you know, the vice captain is saying that they have um, identified these things. So we are expecting that they will improve upon them when we go up against New Zealand. Now, one of the main things that she pointed out, you know, was that it was very good to see um, the, the, the captain, Stephanie Taylor, getting back into some form, getting some runs there, you know, getting a solid half century. 
you know she's also quoted as saying and i quote you know just need a couple more batters to chip in so once we are able to find a couple more batters to chip in then you know we will probably be well on our way i think the final warm-up game that we will play is on tuesday yeah man we will go up against india so two good um teams to play our warm-up games against i guess those two teams will definitely search us and put us to the test well australia did search us some you know india probably will give us a good examine um e examination going into the, the 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 first game against new zealand so yeah my viewers and subscribers um that would make it right about run about 90 or so runs we lost that game by so we lost the game comfortably you know only getting 169 only stephanie taylor really putting runs on the board but the good thing about this thing is usually when we are in tournament people like deandra Dutton and you know Dutton and, and matthews and these ladies they usually step up and i am saying that i am thinking that if we're able to get one over at new zealand on friday come friday then you know that would probably set us up to have a very very good tournament but it won't be easy i can't remember us beating new zealand in recent times and they are going to be playing in their own backyard so that is even definitely going to make it much much tougher for us to to to, to beat them so you know we're definitely going to keep an eye on that one to see how things work out all right so on a much sadder note my viewers and subscribers we have actually lost another former west indian another former west indies player and this time we're talking about the iconic um spinner mr sonny ramadin hopefully i'm pronouncing it pronouncing his name correctly sonny ramadin yeah man he, he actually passed away earlier today i think it was at the age of 92 yeah man i just saw the information not sure if it was last night or or today that he passed away but you know he passed away at the age of 92 and he would have played a couple game a, a couple of games well for west indies you know i have some of his stats here because in all honesty i i didn't really know of him like that you know so i can't really have any stats out of my head so i have it jotted down here now um based on what i'm seeing cwi they actually came out and confirmed that he actually passed away so you know it is coming from the from the cricketing source that he's no longer with us uh i gather that he was living in london well in england at the time of his death not sure if london but in england is what they said now in terms of his west indies career he would have played between 1950 and 1961 long 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 time before i was even ever born <laughs> between 1950 and 1961 is when he played uh, he played 43 test matches for us getting 158 wickets at an average of 28.98 i think you know so that is very very healthy very healthy very good very good career 43 tests and getting 158 wickets that is very solid as i said earlier he was actually from trinidad and tobago you know so i gather that they are in mourning and i know that on this platform we have a lot of trinidadians that watch the program that you know usually comes on so my condolence um goes out to you guys you know um as i said he was living in in, in trinidad at the time but he's one of yours one of ours so you know we definitely send our our, our condolences from the sports to the bone i'm um, show sure here to, to to his family and friends don't know if he, if there is any family or friends that you know might be passing on youtube and see this so we say condolences to to them um i think based on what i'm seeing here is trial game for west indies i think they said he played two games against jamaica for trinidad and tobago where he performed um really really well uh, i think they said against jamaica he got 12 wickets at an average of uh, 19.25 you know and you know he was actually selected shortly after that for the 1950 tour of england i think it was a it was a three match or a four match tour i don't remember test tour but he you know he, he played a very very important role there and we were able to win that that series against england he actually performed well in the first two games of that tour he took what i think 13 wickets is what i i saw when i was when i was reading it he took 13 wickets in that tour and performed reasonably well in the in the in the well two 13 wickets in the first two games and um 
performed reasonably well in the last the last game there so you know condolences go goes out to his family and his friends because as i said it's always tough to lose a loved one you know at the end of the day we don't know when our time is going to come so we just have to make the best use of when we are here and he would have played cricket and would have um would have would have you know given a lot of fans a lot of joy and thing people that would have, that were watching the game back then so condolences to him all right uh yeah one more thing my viewers and subscribers one more thing i don't know how much um football fans we have here but i probably just witnessed the best game football game i have seen in a long 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 while chelsea versus liverpool in that caribbean cup i think final it was and i must say very very good game game played up to 90 minutes still no goal full extra time still no goal and you know all 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 penalty takers i think um 10 uh, 10 kicks were taken nobody missed and then they they went down to what uh they, they went down to um to, to sudden death you know and uh mr the, the goalkeeper chelsea's goalkeeper who was actually subbed down to to to, to save penalties you know arisa alabalaga very good um, penalty stopper um you know he came on he, he he wasn't able to save any of the penalties and he went down to the last two um players the, the two keepers liverpool's keeper scored and then um Kepa, he was only able to kick the ball over the bar you know but as i said guys even before that drama the game was very very good you know we're talking about um end-to-end -end action you know when you're watching basketball and they go from 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 line to line from line to line end-to-end -end action you understand um we had a couple of offside goals for i think Havertz, lukaku and you know we had mohammed salah and sadio mani coming coming up uh well they didn't score but they they, they came close but as I said, the keepers were very, very good throughout the game there. So I don't know how many persons saw that one. So Liverpool actually, actually lift that title there. You know, it's too bad that I have to be reporting on these teams and I can't report anything good about my team. You know? <laughs> but yeah, man, that is basically it for this one, my viewers and subscribers. Just going to say shout out to you all and enjoy the rest of the Sunday evenings in. Big up on yourself. I'm out.